It's another case for that most famous of all manhunters, the detective whose ability at solving crime is unequaled in the history of detective fiction, Nick Carter, Master Detective, presented by the three great Linux home brighteners, Linux clear gloss varnish, Linux cream polish, and Linux self-polishing wax, created by Acme, America's great producer of fine Acme quality paints. <laughs> Today's curious adventure, an eye for an eye, for Nick Carter and the mystery of the upstate murders. In just a moment, we'll hear how Nick Carter solved the mystery of the upstate murders and saved Sharon Fraser a fortune by doing so. But first, here's a tip on homemaking. Millions of American homemakers have learned to care for their walls with Chemtone, the miracle wall finish that brings amazing new beauty. Now, millions more are learning to care for their floors, woodwork, and furniture with the three great Linux home brighteners. Linux self-polishing wax, which beautifies your floors with a satiny yet tough non-skid finish that resists wear, water, and dirt. Linux cream polish, which cleans as it polishes, leaving no oily film on your furniture. And Linux clear gloss varnish, the durable super varnish that dries to an elastic, transparent surface which protects all wood and linoleum in your home. You'll find the three great Linux home brighteners at your hardware, paint, or department store. Your headquarters also for Chemtone, the miracle wall finish. And now for today's mysterious adventure with Nick Carter. As we start today's story, we find Nick and Patsy just entering Lieutenant Riley's office. Well, Riley, what's on your mind? What do you want to see me about? Well, I'll make it short, Nick. You're taking a trip upstate, aren't you? Yes, Lieutenant. For a wonder, Nick is leaving me in charge of the office and taking a few days off. It's hard to believe, but it's true. Well, Nick, you remember Tom Fraser, the young rookie cop who was shot down in cold blood last week? Oh, yes, indeed. Nice young chap. Sorry to see him go like that. Well, his folks live in Watertown. It's right on the way to where you're going. Uh, would you stop off there long enough to call on him and tell him, personal like, how sorry we are at what happened to him? Oh, Nick would love to do that. He makes beautiful speeches. Quiet, Patsy. <laughs> this vacation I'm taking seems to have gone to your head. W w would you do it, Nick? It's a favor to me. Of course he will, Lieutenant. Okay, Riley, I'll do it for you. I suppose the old folks will feel his death a little less keenly if we tell him he died a hero in line of duty. I think that's a darn nice thing to do, Nick. I'm proud of you. Well, thanks, Nick. I knew I could count on you. Can you take me to the Fraser place on Upper Main Street? I sure can, mister. Get here now. Get going. Yes? Come to pay your respects a bit, eh? I suppose that's what you'd call it. Why? Oh, just wondered how far you'd get. Been expecting somebody ever since young Tom got himself killed. Family taking it hard? Some is, some ain't. And some we don't know whether they is or they ain't. Meaning what? Well, nobody ever gets to see the old lady. You mean Mrs. Fraser? Yeah. Nobody but her doctor has seen her since she got sick. From what I hear, she might take it anyway. Oh, a little peculiar? A little. They told Sharon, her own daughter, she was wild and wicked. And she'd be better off dead. Same for the boy Don. That's the house just ahead there. Well, nice looking old place, isn't it? Yeah, looks don't mean much. Outside of a package, don't tell what's inside. Uh, wait, please. I'll be right out. Oh, uh, no, I'll come back. But I'll only be a few. I said I'd come back half an hour. Well, okay, but don't forget me. I won't. Don't you forget about me. Nobody's home. No? Who are you? I'm Uncle Roy. Who are you? I? Why, I'm a policeman. A policeman? Good. Hey, hey, steady there, steady. You're not so drunk you can't stand up. Hey, he's out cold. 
And I'll lay him down. You ought to be ashamed bringing him home in that condition. I'm not bringing him home. I'm just... Oh, taking him out. That's worse. Look here. I'm Nick Carter, and I came here... I'm Sharon Fraser. What do you want? I have a message from Mrs. Fraser, from Lieutenant Riley of the Metropolitan Police. Oh, we've been expecting somebody. Come on, I'll take you to her room. Dr. Gavin, this is Nick Carter. He wants to talk to Mother. Uh, nothing exciting, I hope, Mr. Carter. Well, just the condolences of the Metropolitan Police Department on the recent death of her son, Tom. Tom. Oh. Tom. Tom. Mrs. Fraser, oh. Lieutenant Riley thought the world of your son, and he wanted me to tell you that Tom died in service to the people. You may well be proud of him. Proud of him. And the Lord said, Take now thy son whom thou lovest, and offer him for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I shall tell thee of. Proud of him. Thy son. Oh, maybe you don't understand, Mrs. Fraser. Burnt Lieutenant offering. Riley, Mr. Carter, uh, suppose you come outside with me. One of the well, all right. <laughs> Mrs. Fraser is not fully conscious of what goes on around her. Uh, you've done all you could. Uh, what was all that she was quoting from the Bible? In cases of this kind, it's not unusual for the patient to lean heavily on the Bible as a refuge from reality. But her son... Yes, I know, Mr. Carter. There's nothing to be done about it. All right, Doctor, whatever you say. Well, if you think I can do no good here, I'll just get back to the station. That would be best, I'm sure. And uh, thank you for coming. Driver's long overdue. Wonder if he ever intended to come back. You're waiting for somebody? Oh, yes. Say, what goes with the taxi service in this town? I'd like to get that train to Albany. It's already gone. You, you'll have to stay here tonight. No, thanks. I don't care for the atmosphere here. Uh, you feel it, too? I do. It's the most unpleasant feeling of hatred. Hatred that's monstrous and unnatural. Yeah, I know. I get a little uneasy here, even to myself. I'll be glad to have you... Uh... Father, I need yeah, That's my sister. Mrs. Fraser? Yes. Well, come on. Let's travel up there, all right. Poison. You tell me. You're a detective, aren't you? Where did this milk come from? I got it out of the refrigerator. My brother Don was with me. He got a glass for himself and brought it upstairs. He stopped to talk to Mother while I changed my clothes. And where's your brother now? In his room, I suppose. Well, take me there at once. It's the next room to this. Look for yourself. I will. Sharon, come here. What's the matter? Your brother's dead, and he's been murdered. Mr. Carter, this is Mr. Welch, our county sheriff. How are you, Sheriff? Uh, Dr. Gavin says you don't think young Don Frazier died of heart failure. He died of heart failure, all right. Heart failure brought on by a generous dose of poison. I'm afraid Mr. Carter, being from the city, is used to dealing with the sensation. Mm, probably. But since he makes the accusation, I'll have the coroner analyze the boy's glass of milk. Uh, that ain't necessary. It was murder, all right, and you know who did it? Sharon did it. You're crazy, Uncle Roy. No, no, I ain't. You scared Alec Lord won't fall for you. If you ain't rich and you want money so bad, you're willing to kill for it. Why, you... you drunken old bum. You dare to say that to me. You probably killed him yourself. If we were all dead, you'd be the one to stop get... Stop it. Stop it, both of you. We don't even know Don was killed. It's just that Mr. Carter here is... Oh, Alec, I'm so glad you've come. It's all right, dear. You, Alex Lord? That's right. Thought I'd better drop in before you city cops carted the whole household off to jail. I have nothing to do with this. This is off my beat. Well, don't let me slow you up, Carter. Don't worry, Sheriff, I wouldn't. What I'm getting out of here, killer or no killer, I'd like to be getting to Albany. Where's the phone? It's in the downstairs entrance hall. You'll see it right at the foot of the stairs. Thanks. I'll close the door. Then I won't disturb anyone. Oh, don't mind us. We're leaving now anyway. Good night. <laughs> Time for the 127 to Albany? All right, I'll be on the porch whenever you get here. And don't fail me now. I've had too much trouble finding someone to get me out of here to want you to slip up, too. Okay, goodbye. I don't know why I 
feel as if I... Never fell off that upper landing without being pushed. I better see who's up there. You get some transportation, Mr. Carter? Doctor, come here. Yes? I want to show you something. What is it? Something wrong? Look over the railing. See that big urn? All smashed up at the foot of the stairs? Oh, yes. Why? That just missed me by inches a moment ago. You think somebody was trying to kill you? Think, I'm sure of it. Did you hear anyone up here? Well, yes. Yes, I did think I heard someone in, out here a minute ago. So there really is a killer in the house. I hadn't believed it before. You fellas hear anything? Why, no, did you? I just thought I heard a crash. Well, you did. Someone tried to kill me. Uh, golly, then I did hear somebody tiptoe past my door a bit back. You know who it was? No, it sounded like they went down the back stairs to the kitchen. Let's see who's down there. If anyone is, which I doubt. Come on. Not be safe a minute until he's gone. Don't worry, we'll make it so hot for him, he'll be glad to go. But Alec, we can't. Mrs. Fraser, <gasps> I've changed my mind. I'm staying for the night. You're staying here? Yes. I'd hoped I'd seen the last of you. You almost did, until someone dropped that oversized plaster vase at my head. It was a wonderful idea. I'm sorry it missed. Well, I'll show you where you can sleep. Come on. Ah, that sun feels good. Damp inside that old house. Eight o'clock. Wonder what time they serve breakfast around here. Starting your snooping early, aren't you? Why, yes. Lovely morning for it. Out for a walk in the sunshine? Just out to get the mail, if you must know. I'll let you know if there's anything for you in the box. Thanks, but I'm not expecting anything. Hmm. Happy to say nobody else thinks any more of you than I do. There's no mail. Downstairs, drop to the ground. This looks more serious. Is someone trying to kill Sharon? Or is it Nick they're trying to get? And why? What is this to do with the hate that seems to rule the Fraser household? We'll see in just a moment. Your youngsters are sometimes thoughtless about tracking in mud, slush, and snow these winter days. Even the careful grown-ups sometimes can't help it. But it needn't be a problem to keep your floors looking lovely when you depend on Linux self-polishing wax to protect them. That's because Linux self-polishing wax resists water. It keeps dirt on the surface, too, so that you can clean it up instantly. And because it contains genuine carnauba wax, Linux self-polishing wax resists wear, although it's simply wiped on without tiresome rubbing or polishing. And it's handy to use because when worn spots do appear in the finish, you may renew it without re-waxing the whole floor. There's no doubt about it. Linux self-polishing wax is a splendid finish for any floor, wood, tile, or linoleum, for it gives a beautiful satiny appearance and gives protection besides. What's more, the underwriters' laboratories, whose seal is on every bottle, have proved that it's less slippery underfoot. Here's the modern shortcut to floor care. Linux, L-I-N-X, Linux self-polishing wax. Ask your dealer for it now. You'll find all three great Linux home brighteners and Chemtone, the miracle wall finish, at hardware, paint, and department stores everywhere. And now, back to our story. We left Nick and Sharon as they were being shot at by an unknown killer who seemed to be hiding in the nearby brush. Down, Sharon! Down to the ground! Gone now. You hurt? Not much. Did you see who it was? No. Saw the bushes move, that's all. It wasn't Peter Rabbit. Let me see that arm. It's nothing. Oh, yeah, right. Just a bad scratch. You'll be all right. Here. Let me help you back to the house. Thanks. I feel a little fuzzy. I don't like being shot at. 
You're lucky his aim was no better. He might have killed you. I know. Uh, what's going on here? Did I hear shooting? You did. Take care, Sharon. I'm going to do some investigating. <laughs> Something? Yes. Looking for a killer. A killer? Yes. And the man I'm looking for has my mark on him. I found blood in the bushes from which he did his shooting. Well, maybe that's the man I saw. What do you mean? Well, I was driving up the back road and I saw somebody in here. I was curious, so I stopped and I came in. But I must have missed whoever it was. Well, there's no one here now, that's sure. So if your car is here, you can drive me back to the house. Well, of course. The car's right over there behind the tree. Oh, yes, I see it. Did the killer get anybody? No, he was a poor shot. But he intended murder, all right. Mm-hmm. Here we are. Climb in, Mr. Carter. I see you have a rifle in the car here. Why, yes. Mind if I look at it? Not at all. Hmm. Nice little gun. Haven't had time to clean it, have you? I know. I was doing a bit of hunting this morning on the way out. I see. Let's be getting back, shall we? Well, that is a coincidence, Mr. Carter. Look there, just coming around the corner of the house. Uncle Rory with a rifle. Wonder what he's been shooting. I think I'll have a talk with him. Okay, I'll see you later. Hope he's not the one you're after. Get anything? No. Didn't see a thing. Nice gun you've got there. May I see it? Oh, sure, sure. Here you are. Nice balance. Yeah. Dirty, isn't it? Yeah. Thought you hadn't shot it today. Uh, heaven. I must have forgot to clean it the last time. Smells pretty fresh for that. What are you getting at with all them questions? Somebody shot Sharon a little while ago. Sharon? She hurt bad? No. But that's only because the killer missed. You know anything about it? Me? Why, Mr. Carter, I loved that girl as if she was my own daughter. And why'd you accuse her last night of killing her brother? That was for her own protection, Mr. Carter. I hoped you'd take her away someplace and lock her up where she'd be safe. Isn't she safe here? No, sirree. If she stays around here, she'll be murdered, too. I know what's going on around here. Now, who'd want to kill her? Why, there's... I'm sorry to interrupt, but Mrs. Frazier's very low. Maybe you better come up, Roy. Sure, sure, Doc. Uh, where's Sharon? In her room, resting. How is she, Doc? She'll be all right. Excitement and shock were too much for her. If Mrs. Fraser is really worse, maybe I better get her. Get who? Me? Yes, uh, Sharon, your mother's pretty bad. Oh. Quiet now. Looks about the same to me. Mm, thy life shall hang in doubt before thee, and thou shalt be our day and night to have no assurance to thy life. Oh, don't be tiresome, Mother. Sharon, please. Well, she is. I'll wait downstairs, I guess. Oh, there you are, Carter. Thought you might like to see the results of the analysis of the milk you say killed down Fraser. Yes, I'd like to. You have it? Sure have. <clears throat> According to this... Don's glass of milk contained calcium, phosphorus, lactic acid, water, and 5% butter fat. In other words, Mr. Carter, just plain milk. Here. How about the other sample I gave you? The, the milk from Mrs. Fraser's glass. That? Didn't even look at the report on that. She wasn't killed, was she? No, but she claims she was being poisoned. What does that analysis show? Mm, let's see. Uh, 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 mm, uh, what's highest? A slow-acting poison. Well, I'll be darned. Says here there was enough hyacin in Mrs. Fraser's milk to have poisoned half the county. I thought so. Then why was it Don who got poisoned instead of the old lady? Sheriff, this is all part of a well-thought-up plan. A plan to commit wholesale murder, unless we can stop it. Uh, Carter, you're crazy. Uh, you carry any guns? Why, of course I do. One. Better let me have it. Be safer that way. Why should I turn my gun over to you? As uh, sheriff of this district, it's my duty to see that nobody carries a gun he ain't got a permit for. And I don't trust you. You see things don't exist. Okay, sir. I know I have no rights in this part of the state. Just a minute. Mm. There you are, sheriff. Look, what's the idea of taking out the cartridges before you turn the gun over to me? I don't trust you any more than you do me. 
I'd hate to be shot with my own gun. Why? All right. Give it back to you when you're ready to leave. I hope it'll be soon. Just as soon as I find out a few answers, I don't know yet. Of course, Sheriff. How about anything yet? Nothing that helps, Max. Sharon, if you children didn't get your mother's money when she dies, to whom would it go? Well, Uncle Roy would get it. And if Uncle Roy didn't get it? It goes to some charity, I think. What are you getting at? Does your mother take small doses of hyacin as a sedative? Yes, and it's darned expensive. Could anybody get at it? Probably. It's not locked up. What is all this? I wonder just how sick your mother really is. But you coward! Trying to drag a sick woman's name into this mess. I'm dragging nobody, and I'm just Not trying... Not too loud, please. Mrs. Frazier's feeling better now. Where's Uncle Roy? I left him with Mrs. Frazier. You what? Great grief, get out of my way! Mr. Carter, what's the name? I was afraid of that. Vengeance is mine! Vengeance is mine! I will be paid, said the Lord. Vengeance is mine. Carter, what is happening? Sure. What... Uncle Roy. Yes, Uncle Roy. Dead. So she killed Uncle Roy. Stabbed him in the back. Yes. Must have made him lean over the bed and then drove the knife in his back. And this is mine. I should have warned you, Mr. Carter. I've known for a long time that she was dangerously insane, but I never dreamed she would go this far. First Don, now Uncle Roy. Mr. Carter, do you mean that Mrs. Fraser had anything to do with, with Don's death? That's ridiculous. How could she have killed Don? It was really very easy, Sheriff. Just as soon as I found the analysis showed Hyacinth and her milk... I knew the answer. She coaxed down to try it. And there was so much poison in it that even the sip he took was fatal. The poison made him sleepy and he went to his own room to lie down. But why? Why should she want to do it? I'll get to that in a minute. Well, old Mrs. Fraser certainly wasn't the one who fired at Sharon this morning. Naturally not. But if you'd got there a little sooner, Alex, you'd have caught the murderer red-handed. He stopped his car by the road, ran into the brush, shot at Sharon, missed her because he was in a hurry, and then got back in his car and drove on. Do you know who it was who did the shooting, Mr. Carter? I do. It was the same one who was responsible for Don's death and for Uncle Roy's. But you said Mother killed them. You notice I said the one who was responsible. Your mother isn't responsible. She's just the instrument the murderer used to accomplish his ends. But who is it, then? Sharon, whose leather jacket is that on the chair behind you? Leather jacket? What? Yes. That's Dr. Gavin's. I remember he wore it when he helped me into the house this morning. Well, look at the right sleeve. Right sleeve. Oh, I see. There's blood on it. It must have come from where I was shot when I leaned on him. That isn't your blood, Sharon. You'll find more blood inside the sleeve, which certainly couldn't have come from your arm. What are you getting at, Miss Carter? The real murderer is the one who could best work on poor Mrs. Fraser's mind with drugs and suggestions. The one who implanted in her sick mind the idea that her children were evil and wicked. The only one who could have left a surgeon's scalpel where her hand could get at it when she wanted to stab Uncle Roy in compliance with his suggestion. Carter, you mean the Dr. Gavin? Yes, Alec, that's what he means. And he's quite right. Dr. Gavin, you... It would have worked out except for you, Carter. I was afraid of you when you first came here. That's why I tried to kill you with that urn. You overplayed your hand, Gavin. You let me go my way as I wanted to. I would never have given the Fraser household a second thought. But you made me mad. And that was your mistake. I didn't dare let you go. But you wished you had this morning when my shots winged you in the arm as you tried to kill Sharon. I'll get even for that right now. (gasps) Dr. Gavin, a gun! You can't... Oh, yes, he can, Sheriff. Right, Mr. Carter. I happen to know that the Sheriff took your gun away from you. So you're helpless. There'll be no last-minute gun battle with you in the fight. There'll just be one shot for each of you, and I... Sorry to disappoint you, Gavin. But the Sheriff only took one of my guns. He overlooked the one on my shoulder holster, which you see is quite effective. All right, Alec, pick up his gun. Now get the sheriff. He'll know what to do with a cowardly rat like this. But I don't understand why Dr. Gavin wanted to get them all killed off. What did he hope to get out of it, Nick? Well, that was all brought out at the inquest, Betsy. Seems that this Gavin was an imposter. Never was a doctor. Got kicked out of medical school in his senior year for being mixed up in an illegal operation. He met old Mrs. Fraser a few years ago, and in some way convinced her that he was a great doctor. As far as I know, he had no other patients. He concentrated on her because he knew that she had over a million dollars sold it away. And he wanted it. But how could he hope to get it, Nick, even if he did kill off all the other heirs? Well, Patsy, remember I told you that after the children and Uncle Roy were killed, the money was to go to some charity? 
Yes, I remember that. Well, investigations showed that the charity that was to get the money was a phony outfit that Gavin had fixed up for the occasion. Oh. In other words, Gavin and the charity were one and the same thing. And existed only for the purpose of getting the Fraser Million. That's a pretty clever setup at that. Yes, but Gavin forgot one thing, though. Well, what was that? When he was whispering biblical quotations to the old lady, he should remember the one that goes, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, a life for a life. Oh, I see what you mean. That's the one that applies to him right now. A life for a life. Too bad he missed that one. Well, how are you, oh. Patsy? Any word from Nick? Oh, just a minute, Nick. Oh, hello, Lieutenant. I'm talking to Nick right now. Oh. Want to say hello to him? Well, sure. Why not? Nick? Yes? Lieutenant Riley just dropped in. He wants to say hello to you. Hold on. Nothing doing. That's one reason I came up here for a vacation. Just so I wouldn't have to say hello to Riley. Oh, but Nick... Bye-bye, Patsy. See you when I get back. Well... He couldn't wait to talk to you, Lieutenant, but he said to give you his regards anyway. In just a moment, Nick and Patsy will give you a preview of next week's exciting case. But before they do, here's a hint to every good hostess. When you invite guests these days, it's so brisk outside, there's an added warmth of hospitality inside a home that's beautifully cared for. And your home has that look when you care for your floors, your woodwork, your furniture, with the three great Linux home brighteners. You'll notice, for instance, that your furniture takes on new loveliness when you've used Linux cream polish to remove that cloudy accumulation of dust and previous polish. For Linux cream polish cleans as it polishes your furniture. Yes, it's true. In one quick, easy application, you banish messy fingerprints and dirt from your furniture, leaving a gleaming luster without that oily film which attracts more dust, makes more work. Linux cream polish saves one whole step in your cleaning day routine. And you'll like the way it helps conceal ugly scratches, too. Get it at your dealers now. Linux cream polish, spelled L-I-N-X. Get all three great Linux home brighteners... Linux self-polishing wax, Linux cream polish, and Linux clear gloss varnish at your nearest hardware, paint, or department store. And now let's hear from Nick Carter himself. Well, Nick, what can you tell us about your next thriller? A young friend of mine fell heir to a large and prosperous farm. But the three members of the family who had owned the farm before him and all three died within a period of four years. Their deaths were also natural and so perfectly open and above board that he got suspicious. Everything looked too good. Well, that seems like a peculiar way to feel. Well, Ken, the peculiar part of it came in when we started our investigations and found he was right. And found it out only just in time to save the life of the young fellow himself. The whole thing was extremely cleverly worked out. What do you call it, Nick? Ready for murder. Or the mystery of the dead Scotty. Now, so long. So long, everybody. And so long to you both. See you again next week as usual. Next week at this same time, listen to another curious experience of Nick Carter, Master Detective, entitled... Ready for Murder. Or Nick Carter and the Mystery of the Dead Scotty. Nick Carter, Master Detective, is featured in Street and Smith magazine. Lon Clark is starred as Nick with Helen Schultz as Patsy. Original music is played by Lou White, and the programs are written and directed by Jock McGregor. Nick Carter, Master Detective, is presented at this time and over these same stations each week by the three great Linux home brighteners. Linux clear gloss varnish, Linux cream polish, and Linux self-polishing wax, created by Acme. America's great producer of Acme fine quality paints. This is Ken Powell speaking for the thousands of Linux dealers all over America.